So last stop in our tour of the, all the grand propositions of finance uh, related to price equals expected discounted payoff. Random walks, time varying risk premiums, market efficiency. Here we're thinking about the behavior over time. So far I've been thinking about why one asset earns more returns on average than another. Now let's think about assets behavior over time. Let me just give you the intuitive idea first. Suppose we're, we're sitting around and, and the stock market's at 100, but everybody thinks it's going to be at 110 tomorrow. What do you do? Answer, buy. And you better be quicker about it than that if you want to make money in today's markets. Now what happens if everybody tries to buy? Here's the situation. Price is at 110. Everybody expects it to be, price is at 100. Everyone expects 110 tomorrow. There's some distribution tomorrow, but the expected value is 110. Well, if everybody tries to buy today, of course, they're going to drive the price up today. And they're going to drive the price up today right about until today's price is equal to the expected value of where it'll be tomorrow. So competition should drive today's price to the expected value of tomorrow's price. Turning that around, that means tomorrow's price should be equal to today's price plus some shock, some un unforecastable shock. Prices should follow a random walk. Now that's not exactly right. That's intuition. That's not exactly right. Let's do the exactly right from our, our discounted formula. Price is expected discounted payoff tomorrow. Or the discounted price including dividends should equal today's price plus the shock. To be even more explicit, the discount, if you use the consumption-based discount factor, that's what should equal today's price plus the shock. But if you're looking at high frequency data, especially days, weeks, even months, it's easy to show that most of this stuff doesn't really matter. The shocks are so big compared to that that we're very close to the random walk in any case. Another touchstone coming back to our regular equations that'll be useful. Uh, let's suppose that expected returns in continuous time are constant through time. So the expected return or the expected increase in the value process is just mu is constant, doesn't change over time. Then uh, taking logs, the, the, the change in the log of VT, we have the Ito's term, or the log of the value process should be today's log of the value process plus the expected return term. The value, log of the value process should follow a random walk with drift. But the drift term for daily or weekly uh, uh, will be very, very small. So in fact, this is very close to a random walk as well. So constant expected return is the same thing as the random walk with a, a constant drift term. Time varying expected returns would imply a time varying drift term. Now, the random walk is, is interesting in its own right. It's a very interesting process. The crucial prediction here is that nothing else matters. Nothing but, nothing but the current price should be helpful for forecasting future prices. If we ran a regression of price tomorrow on price today plus some other forecasting variable, that other forecasting variable should not enter. Why not? Well, if anybody could tell where prices were going tomorrow better than the price today, they would jump in, send the price today going up. This is the traditional concept of market efficiency. And it describes in a very deep way uh, one sense of what's going on in all our asset pricing formulas. That the price today reveals all the information that there is about the expected value tomorrow, properly discounted if you're being careful, or just the, the price tomorrow if you're approximate and high frequency. And that's not something deep. As you can tell, it's just about competition. If the price were today were too low, if there were some signal, then people would pour in. Competition would drive the price up today. It's a very simple proposition, very intuitive, but very deep. It says nothing else should be able to forecast prices. In particular, things that people love to do, like technical trading, shouldn't work at all. Just for fun, I've made a graph of, the, um, I've made a, graph of a random walk. So this is a plot uh, of it's just a random walk simulated with parameters to look like daily stock price movements in a year. This is our completely artificial data. Yet your eye, the human eye, looks at this and so much wants to see patterns. And the statistical computer eye wants to see patterns as well. I mean, look at my plot. There's resistance levels. Every time the stock market hits the resistance level, it pushes back again. Then finally, when it breaks through the resistance level, the old trend is eliminated, and we're breaking into the new trend of the bull market. 
all sorts of stuff your eyes your eyes see waves at regular period there's like a, a half a month wave the chondrotiev wave cycle your eye just wants to see that so does your computer standard errors of random walks are, are, are typically quite wrong and that that is a lot of fun showing how all those things uh, don't work or work a lot less well than people think more implications um, it says that, that the concept of price pressure, that if prices are, are driven down by a wave of selling and they'll bounce back in the future, or that long-run investors can, can afford to wait out these short-term price uh, fluctuations, those are all wrong in a random walk. Those all reflect the view that if the price went down today, there's some sort of bounce back. Nope. A random walk, once it went down, it's down forever. A and uh, statistically, that's a very close approximation to what stock returns are. And, and this captures a, a lot of the, the ideas of finance. Now, the facts, as we've looked at the facts, is not true. <laughs> there are variables that can forecast stock returns. We ran regressions uh, in the first day of returns on dividend yields and found that, in fact, you can forecast returns. What does that mean? Uh, does that mean this is all wrong? No. The dividend yields move very slowly over time. But it does mean that we will have to expand our theory in order to, to, to take account of facts of that sort. So a forecast of returns, the fact that you can forecast returns, that means that regression means that expected returns vary over time. When dividend yield is high, expected returns are high. When dividend yields are low, expected returns are low. So expected returns vary over time. That means in our theory, the covariance of returns with the discount factor will have to vary over time. That means we will need time-varying correlations. That's too ugly to think about. But more likely, we will need time-varying risk aversion or time-varying riskiness. That adds a layer of, of interest to our models. Of course, there is time-varying riskiness. There's, there's recessions, there's financial crises, there's times when risks are higher and times when risks are lower. So no surprise that expected returns vary over time. It just means our models are going to be more interesting. Another implication, let's look at it in terms of the discount factor. That means that the conditional variance of the discount factor has to vary over time. Expected returns, the slope of the mean variance frontier, were all related to the standard deviation of the discount factor. If expected returns vary over time, the discount factor must be heteroscedastic. That means simple linear models aren't going to work. Our, when we construct models for bonds and options, we're going to have to think of models with time varying variances of the discount factor, which just makes it more fun. Does this mean markets are inefficient? No. Uh, certainly tr it's certainly possible, and even Fama's original essay pointed out that risk and risk aversion can vary over time. Now, it's more sensible if they're varying over time at business cycle frequencies in response to visible changes in the economy. If they were varying over time from Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you might think twice about it. But in fact, that's roughly where we see the time varying expected returns. And last point, this makes an important connection. Forecasting returns is the same thing as saying expected returns, compensations for risk, risk premiums vary over time. So that's the new set of facts. It slightly changes the random walk, but it, it changes it at, at lower frequencies. There's, there's slow movements in expected returns reflecting slowly varying risk premia that will make our modeling effort much more interesting than it would have been otherwise.